Yo, this is Asma for Destiny. I'm Phil from Fit World Exposed. And today we're going to talk about the hack rack pull and people getting knee pain on it because that's one of the main complaints that I receive from guys. Like they, they want to do the lift for the upper back and the traps, but they just get so much knee pain because the weight is like, it's, it's more of a quad dominant lift rather than posterior chain. So in this video, we're going to give you tons of tips for dealing with that knee pain because it would be a shame not to do this exercise. Like we truly believe that it's a fundamental lift for drug free lifters. Like if you get strong, at hack rack pull, specifically pin one, you take that shit to above 700 pounds, like, dude, it's amazing. Like, it builds your, your deadlift strength automatically, yeah. builds your upper back, builds your trap, builds your yoke, like, everything. It's just a fundamental lift in, in getting jacked. So, we're going to talk about yeah. some special tips. Before we get into it, I just want to, like, share my opinion on the lift. Like, I yeah. think it's hands down, like, I'm, I'm a big rack puller. Like, I, I love rack pulls slightly above the oh, knee. Oh, yeah, we always talk about it, for sure. But I argue that the... The hack rack pull from pin one is the best lift for drug free lifters. As far as right now is concerned, you know, I might change my mind later, but for right now, that's the best lift because you're getting way more range of motion. You're getting crazy range of motion. The range, it doesn't even look like a partial, it looks like a full lift. It is full range. And then like um you're you're overloading your upper back, obviously, and like the potential for heavy weights is like ridiculous, you know. It really You've is. You've seen Eric Bugenhagen do like serious lifts, Mike the Machine, like the way they pull behind the back, like even Alex, you know, like they it's a lift that like lends itself to a lot of poundages. Yeah, like, so. th like think about it. I know we're going off topic, but um, I did 700 on pin one, right? Imagine if I do 1,000 on pin one. Automatically, number one, your pull off the floor is going to be 800 at least. And you're going to be yoked out of your mind. So it's, it's in your best interest to do this lift. Uh, so if you get knee pain, then we got to address that. So I think it's about time we uh, start talking about it. Yeah, so... So, how, how about you share your experience first, because... Yeah, so for all you for all of you um, viewers who don't already know, I had an ACL surgery, ACL meniscus, a couple of months ago. I think it's been, like, seven months now or something. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, like, I had to... I had a lot of, like, rehab time. I had a lot of time in bed, and, like, I had to find a way how to re rehab my stuff. I had, like, a phys physical therapist and stuff, but I was obviously doing, like, a lot of research on my own. I was called, talking to, like, other coaches... You know, you could even check my uh, the Fit World blog. Like I talk, I talk to all these coaches. You know, I'm getting advice, reading like a lot of like Ben Bruno stuff, uh, a lot of Ben Bruno stuff, and like, so if anybody could give you advice on like knee pain, it's me. You know, because he's, he's like, been in the trenches. I've been in the trenches. Like, you he know? knows what he's talking about. And he had a fucking surgery, man. So it's like if I if I could give you a lot of advice on how to do this lift pain free, you know. So we're gonna get into it. So first off, before we even get into that, I want to explain why you're getting knee pain in the first place from the hack lifts, right? Yes. So one, it might be because you're going way too high. You're probably pulling from a pin that's like, probably pulling from pin two or three. Yeah. I, ta I was talking to Bugenhagen the other day and he, even, he said, look, there's way too much, like I experienced way too much knee pain from it. And I agree too. And I think even you said when you passed pass 900, you... Yeah, like for me, felt some knee discomfort. Falls, right? Because I have very strong quads genetically and strong knees. If I go pin one, no knee pain. If I go pin two, a pretty more. much no knee pain, just a tiny bit. But if I go pin three, like when I did 905, my knees, they, I won't lie, they kind of hurt a bit. Yeah. Because it's, it's, there's a lot of pressure on them, man. It's a small, super small range of motion, and it's all quad for the most part. Yeah, there's a, that, there's a lot of quads in the lift. You it's know? a lot of quads. It's kind of like a trap bar deadlift on steroids, basically. Yeah, that's, that, with the bar that's how I would describe it. It's a trap bar so deadlift on steroids. The reason why you're getting knee pain from this lift, it's very simple. It's because, look, you're pull, the, first off, the bar is behind your back. So when you're pulling, obviously... Your knees are more like this? It's a different... Yeah, it's a different angle. And it's not like the deadlift where, like, you could kind of, like, lean back and, like, kind of counterbalance the weight. It's literally the complete opposite. So if you stand too upright, you might even just fall down because of the weights in back of you, you know? Yeah. So your body... And obviously, as the weight gets heavier, and, like, your body's going to look for the most... The easiest way to do the lift... Exactly. It's going to resort to that... To the way of where you're, you're leaning forward a bit. Exactly. What happens when you lean forward... Less of the pressure goes from on the heels and it gets shifted to the front of the foot. Yeah, so you end, up, you end up pressing with your toes, man. It ends up being like a sissy squat on steroids, you know? Yeah, that's, that's how I'll describe it. So that's why you're getting knee pain from it, you know? Yeah. So, and so my first recommendation would be you want to pull, you don't want to pull from pin one, two or three. Or if you're really tall, you don't want to pull from pin four. You want to do it from the floor or pin one? Yeah, I, I would say uh, you can do it off the floor or boxes of two, four, and six inches yeah. or pin one. I think these are the best heights uh, for doing the lift without knee pain. Mm -hmm. Am I going to do that? Uh, probably not because I, I'm a bit more lucky. I don't get as much knee pain. But for Phil, like 100%, this is what he has to do. There's no way. Like, I don't think he's ever going to do hack above the knee. You plan no, on doing no. it? You don't plan no, on it, Probably right? not. Even, even pin one's like, it's tough, you know? Oh, yeah? So, 
that's another thing too. It's like if you're watching this, you want to make sure that your program is has a lot of posterior chain work, you know? Yeah. You so get, if you're already yeah. doing a lot of quad work to begin with, you don't want to have more hacks like to overdevelop sure, your quads, sure. you know? Yeah, yeah, because then you start developing anterior pelvic tilt and, and quad dominance. And that's not what we're trying to do, okay? Uh, you always want to be posterior chain dominant. So you, you got to do a lot of accessories for that. Like yeah. You really do. A general rule of thumb, I would say you want to do at least three to four times more posterior chain work than quad knee dominant work. Yeah, I would agree with that. For sure. sure it's not like it's not like set in stone or anything, but like that's like a general rule, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, like even a lot of coaches, like even like I was reading some stuff by uh, Brett Contreras, even he said like, look, it's a lift that you only want to do on occasion too, you know? So it's like a couple of other coaches, they, they, even they argue that like it's, it's not a lift that you, you want to be abusing like year in and year out, week after week. So oh, it's like- I'm, I'm gonna abuse it, fuck that. You're gonna abuse it? <laughs> but I'm saying, no, we're talking about guys who experience knee pain, you know? Yeah, okay. So it's like, you're like, you're not in this, you know, <laughs> but you're obviously rotating lifts like for the rack pull. Like you could do, for example, on your intensity day, you could do above the knee snatch grip for like two, three weeks. And like next week you could do, you could do hack pin one. Yeah. And yeah. then you could do another variation like okay, Jefferson what, or something. What you know? he's saying is this basically, if you're going to do below the knee, use the hack style. But if you're going to go like at the knee or above the knee, just do it from the front because these, these aren't going to hurt your knees basically. And you're still getting the whole uh, spectrum of ranges of motion. Mm hmm that's a fair point yeah and uh, let's right. talk let's talk about let's talk technique tips so it's like obviously like it's very normal that you're gonna like you're gonna shift more of the weight to the front of your foot but you want to try as hard as possible to still push the heel anyways yeah so do it kind of like richard hawthorne style where you're pushing to the whole foot yeah think of it like that you know it's a little cute but it helps okay um, <laughs> that's all for technique um i, I want to talk about the bands the, i was just about to address yeah, that yeah it's super important so it's like look the, the bottom of the rep is, is stressful for the knees, right? Yeah. So if you overload it with bands, like you put band, a shitload of band tension on the side, I'm not talking about like some lights, I'm talking about like some... Like very like some, like average some, and strong, basically. Some very good tension, you know? That, that's going to like kind of deload your knees at the bottom, so it's going to be a bit easier. And then the lockout, you're going to have a lot of tension. Yeah, think of it like... So you're going to um, feel a lot in your upper back at the top. Yeah. So compared to a, uh, a bench press, right, with bands, yeah. the bottom becomes easier, the top becomes harder. So what, what happens when you do a bench with bands? There's less chest, right? Because mm -hmm. there's less weight on, on the chest. Well, the same thing for the hack rack pull. If you set up band tension, um, the bottom, which is where your knees are going to hurt a lot, you're not going to feel as much tension because it's going to be lighter. So it's going to be easier to break off the pins. And then at lockout, pretty much when your knees are already locked, you're going to have all that heavy band tension pulling on you. So you're still getting all the, um, the upper back and trap benefits, but now your knees don't hurt. Exactly. So this is a really, uh, really good fix for guys who have knee pain. Just do oh, the hack amazing, with yeah. band tension. That's amazing. And also, if you have access to chains, I would even loop a chain like in the middle of the bar. Get yeah, that some, could help. Get some addis additional like um, overload at the top. Yeah, but I think with bands, you, sh you should be covered, really. Yeah, and like we're not talking like, like let's say if you're pulling 500, try to have like 500 at the bottom, 700 at the top, you know? Yeah, get some serious tension on top. And it's like obviously the more knee pain you have, the more band tension you're going to exactly, need. Exactly. So f for a guy like me, I might even need like 300 pound pounds of band tension at the top. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah? So it's like... That's, it is what it is, you know. Another another tip that I could give you guys to help with the knee pain is you want to super you could superset your hacks with like something like a hamstring curl. What this is gonna do is it's gonna drive blood into the hamstrings and it's gonna make it, your knees feel a lot more comfortable. So for example, if you were to take let's say you hurt your elbows hurt when you do extensions, right? A lot of people say that oh if they do like uh, like light band curls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just drive blood into the biceps yeah, and true. forms, it tends to make them feel better for yeah, their extensions, true. you yeah. know. So the same principle could apply to this and I actually tried it myself and like it felt a lot better, you know? So I'm obviously not doing like one rep maxes on like my hamstring curls. I'm just doing reps, you know, just trying to get as much blood in there as possible. And you're resting between sets anyway. So while you're resting, it's just active rest. You might as well exactly, just go exactly. to the hamstring curl machine, do, do like, you know, right. a set of 15, 20, drive some blood in there. Yeah, speaking about hamstring curls, I think that you guys uh, should take the advice of Louis Simmons, which is basically I was about, yeah. I was about buying to, ankle yeah. weights, doing 200 reps a day, so 100 per leg. That's really going to build the tendons and ligaments so that you can support these heavy ass loads. Exactly. And it's yeah. going to kind of correct that quad to hamstring imbalance that you might develop from doing this lift. Yeah. Another, like, and the hamstring curls, that's between the sets when you're actually doing the exercise. Before the exercise, I'd recommend that you grab a band, you loop it through a power rack, and you do some TKEs, some terminal knee extensions. Can you explain what that is? So basically, you'll take like a band, you'll take a band and you'll just, you'll do this. Okay. So, so the band is pulling like against here. That's gonna help like uh, it's gonna help your quad flex. It's gonna like train the VMO a bit. It's gonna drive like some blood into there. 
and it just makes your knees feel a lot better as a whole. You know? What about doing those sumo stumps with the bands? Oh, the, the band stomps. Yeah, yeah. Th those are good stomps. too. Yeah, you could. You, what I actually recommend is you you superset that with the band stomps. Okay, that's a good drill. It's a really good drill, just just to get you like started, you know. Yeah, you know what? I, I have another cue, which is uh, I told Phil about this. I find it helps personally, like for me. Well, not for me there. Well, sort of. What you do is uh, you warm up with conventional rack pulls, but then once you start getting closer to your peak sets, like say three warm up sets uh, before you're about to max. Yeah. Start pulling behind the back. Because yeah. this way, you won't have as many warm-ups uh, with the knees. You, you'll be teaching yourself to pull back and use the uh, posterior chain. And you'll be smart, teaching yourself smart. to press through the whole foot. So by the time you're pulling hack, it's like, in your mind, you still think it's conventional. So you're treating it like a conventional. Therefore, it becomes less of a quad-dominant lift. Mm -hmm. It's a really good uh, tip for you guys. Also, if you want to kind of take a bit of the, the, the stress off your knees at the top, you want to squeeze your glutes harder. I feel like that helps a bit. Squeeze, yeah. your, squeeze your glutes hard at the top, it's going to like... I, I've always done that automatically. Yeah, but some people, like, I don't know, some people they just feel it all in the knees, you know? So it's like you need to distribute the load more, you know? Also, before you pull, you want to kind of, like, squeeze your upper back a bit. It's, like, more of a bodybuilding tip. You know, you squeeze your upper back because that's what you want, which you want to work more. So that way, when you're doing the lift, you'll feel a bit more in the upper back. You get it? I don't really know what you mean by that, but whatever. Yeah, right. Let's move forward. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, so you see, we're, we're breaking it down, guys. We're giving you every tip you need because this lift is just too good. Yeah, okay, shoes. So shoes, if, if yeah, you're yeah. wearing like a, a Olympic weightlifting shoes. Yeah, cut that shit off, man. Yeah. You don't want to be wearing Olympic shoes because... What it's going to do is going to elevate the heel and it's going to make you feel it in the front of your foot even more. Your knees will feel like death. Put you it that way. will, yeah. Actually, you know what I found to be true? Based off my experience? Yeah. If you uh, wear shoes that have foam in it, it's actually beneficial. You're not supposed to do that with regular deadlifts because it makes you lift less. And even on this, I would argue that it makes you lift uh, mm -hmm. less. But actually... It gives you less knee pain because it's more muscle tension, less joint. Okay, okay, I get it. Yeah. Okay, like, like I know that Louis Simmons, for example, he'll make uh, his athletes squat while standing on foam. Okay, okay, I get like it. Like he'll yeah. make them stand on foam and do squats because the fact that you're putting your feet into that foam, it replicates uh, like walking on sand, you know? Okay, I get it. It, yeah. it puts attention on the muscles. So you'll feel it more in your quads and less knees. If you that's have a good tip. A that's that's a solid tip there. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if you don't have that, you can just take a, a mat that you do wrestler bridges on. Yeah. And put it where you would be doing the hack or uh, rack pulls. Also, for for rep work, I would recommend like for rep ranges. You don't want to go like uh, too high in the reps with these. So I feel like one to five is. Like, yeah, that, that's fine, a super. You know? Yeah, I would never go above five reps. Like, don't do like sets of twelve. Yeah. Have, like knee like pain don't don't do it on your volume days in the rack style. If you're gonna do the hack, um, either pu like pull off the floor for reps. And, or just or do uh, low reps in the rack on your intensity days, mm -hmm. but don't be doing high rep on rack pulls. Like I, I did that last week, just like progressive range of motion style, like doing reps of ten with just five hundred pounds. No. my knees were hurting like crazy, man. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good idea. You want to treat it like a, like a really a max effort lift that you throw in every once in a while. No. training. but these these are like some really solid tips that you could use, and like I feel like the one that's most bang for your buck is hands down the bands. Cause like yeah, the bands is probably the most practical solution. It's the most practical, you know? Yeah. And it's like, if, I, if you guys want to know any other ones, I'll, I'll throw in the last one and we'll wrap up this video. Yeah. You could use the old um, bodybuilding pre-exhausting method. So it's like, let's say it's like your, your knees are too shot, even though you're doing everything we said in this video, like you're using the bands, you're using the supersets, you're warming up properly, all the technique cues, mm -hmm. you're doing like the reps we prescribe and you're still getting pain from that. Even though you're using like even more band tension than we recommended, I would just recommend like, look, you have to bite the bullet, you'll, you'll do all your, like, you know, whatever you have to do, your rows and all that stuff, and you'll do the hack lift at the end. Yeah, do it at the end so you lift the least amount of weight possible. Yeah, so you can still get, like, some sort of a stimulus from it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you'll just, you'll, you'll get more out of using less weight because you're obviously pretty exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a solid point. Yeah. So, so a lot of bodybuilders actually do this who have, like, you know, lower back pain and stuff, but they still want to deadlift, you know, they'll do yeah, all the rows. Yeah, they'll do, like, a serious session, and by the time they're doing the poles, it's like they're tired. Yeah. So they don't, they don't lift super heavy, and Dorian therefore... Dorian used to do that. You could deadlift seven plates, and you said by the end of this back workout, you can only do four. Yeah. You yeah, know, that's solid. So. Yeah, same thing for, like, bench pressing, you know? If you do, like, dynamic effort pressing, and you do a bunch of dumbbell pressing after, imagine trying to do, like, low reps on the flat bench. It feels impossible. You can't lift heavy weight. Yeah. So well, it's all, yeah, it's a good method. And let's say worst case scenario, you can't do a lift at all. It's not the end of the world, but it's like it's it's up there, man. It's up there, man. Like, it's like uh, it's a really like it's a solid lift. Like yeah. you don't want to miss out on it, you know. Like when I first told Phil about it, like he tried it, he was like, "Fuck, I, all I feel is my quads." But the next day, the way he felt in his upper back traps, yeah. 
he knew it was it had to be uh yeah also with. what i've noticed for some people it's kind of like some people are just it's uncomfortable at first but then they just have to kind of suck it up you know so for some people it's like they've never front squat in their life yeah so it feels tight on the wrist it feels tight on the, the wrist back, the clavicles, the clavicles. it kind of hurts you know but then over time it's just like okay they adapt to it you know it's the same thing with like the pussy pad for uh, for back squats you know yeah they, so sometimes you just got to tough it up and deal with the pain. Yeah, but if you're toughing it up and you still feel like the like, pain after everything that we're telling you. Then maybe you should just not do the lift. But honestly, you, yeah. you should be fine with what we're saying. Like, we broke it down to the extreme. And that's really all there is to it. All right, man. So, solid video, man. Hope this helps you out. Talk to you guys next time.